Good evening, everyone. My name is Cameron Sims, and I'm the host of Friends House Hour, a show on CHMR where I play artists big and small with a focus on the lo-fi indie rock scene, but will occasionally branch off to other genres under the indie umbrella such as indie folk or slowcore. This week's artist feature is an online duo named Willy Rodriguez, also known as Willy Rodriguez Was Taken on streaming platforms, featuring musician Star Star from Alberta and William Rodriguez from Manitoba. Their sound can be compared to the band Hers and the Smiths, but with a noisier, distorted twist. This first song of theirs is named Power Walker, and is the opening track to their album Silly Love Songs for Unfortunate Breakups, released on May 24th of 2022 on Friends House Records. You can stream and download the album on most platforms where they sell or stream music, and I highly suggest you do. So without further ado, let us take a listen. So, that song was called Power Walker by Willie Rodriguez off of their album Silly Love Songs for Unfortunate Breakups. You can stream it, buy it, whatever you want right now. Um, first of all, going to have to ask you guys to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Star Star. I make the music. Hi, I'm Willie. I do the lyrics. So, first of all, the song that we just played on the air is called Power Walker. And uh, I was wondering, what is that song written about? It's just it's done. A- Three Shit. takes of this. This is the third take of this of this interview. Whoa. I know. This is. I don't know. Don't let me finish. Okay, so we've done three takes of this interview. I think it's about. And oh my god, let me it's talk. About, okay, so we've done cremation. three takes of this interview, and every time and this guy totally goofs it up. To make it a metaphor about being in. So no, no. Okay, so I'll. Summer. I know. 
And then it clicked in my head. I went, there we go. That's a song. <laughs> and then we made a hit. Stop. <laughs> just, okay, yeah, wait, you explain just, it again, but for real. No, I, explain I it again. I just did. For I just... Cam, did no, you but, get that? Okay, it's a song about being cremated, but I want to make a metaphor about being stuck inside your house in summer because you usually can't go out and do stuff, and it's like you just rot inside all summer, and it's not fun! <laughs> so that's why, that's that's the song about. And um, Star made a really cool instrumental track. Um, actually, the story behind that album was um, Star had a bunch of old demos that uh, he didn't use for his band Sex Proof at the time. That's like defunct now. But he showed them to me, and all of them were like fucking bangers. So I wanted to, I wanted to like do another album with them. And then, you know, we're inseparable now. We're, we can never be replaced. So, of course, with all online duos, there's some sort of story to how, you know, they met up. So, would you guys be able to go over how you two met up online? Yeah, I'll go first. We met up on Discord.com. Through, um, I made a Discord and he joined it and he tried to troll me. But I'm untrollable, so I didn't, I didn't block him. Uh, and he... And 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 then we started making music together. That's okay, awesome. now do you want now do you want the real story? Yeah, give <laughs> us the real story. <laughs> so basically we met in high school I and we were both in the Sonic you. fan club and basically he was Shadow I'm and I was Sonic. Um, Hold on, we were can rivals. I, at can first. I uh, cut you off for a second? That actually reminds me I saw a uh, I saw a ad for like some sort of sonic fan club at my university like genuinely <laughs> i gotta send the picture hold on you gotta you gotta join that that's fuck. that's a cool ass it was the fan club it was the best uh advertisement i've ever seen in my entire life see this no but what we did was um basically he dre- he dressed up like a shadow the hedgehog every day and i dressed up like in sonic <laughs> and we like hung out every day Here, what's the next question <laughs> 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 So, uh, the next question is, um, what song of yours are you guys most proud of? I really like Drug Bug. I, I really like that I, I incorporated sampling and I, I like made this really jangly key part and, uh, I, I made it like in, uh, a sharp, wait, no, 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 I made it in like a fucking, oh my God, I'm sorry. I made it in a key where it's in between keys. If you get if you get that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like um yeah. microtonal. Yeah. There's a few songs I know that do that where it's like it's not exactly perfectly tuned, right? If that's what yeah. you mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I find yeah. that often gives songs like I don't know, for some reason sometimes it makes songs sound better. Yeah, I agree. So what about you, Willie? My favorite song that we've ever made is Dollhouse, which was originally supposed to be Breezo Block Train Stop, but I mixed up the titles. Um, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's one of my favorites because I really like the instrumentation on it. And I like how it's like a, like a cool like change ups and it like all flows together really well. And I think it's a really beautiful song. And yeah. Awesome. We will be right back with more questions for Willie Rodriguez and Star Star on the line. But as of right now, up next is another highlight from the record, in my opinion, called Your Biggest Fan. So let's take a listen. Yeah. 
My favorite band t-shirt doesn't fit me anymore, so that's cool. That song was Your Biggest Fan by Willie Rodriguez off of their album Silly Love Songs for Unfortunate Breakups. You can download it, buy it, stream it, wherever you want. Um, at the end of the song, you say, my favorite band t-shirt doesn't fit me anymore. So, Willie, would you like to describe what favorite band and the story of said t-shirt? There's this Bob Marley t-shirt my uncle gave me because Cheer when up. I was... Well, there was a band t-shirt my uncle gave me back when I was just a wee little lad. Um, it was because I got my other shirt dirty and a bunch of mud. Icky! So, after that, I thought, hmm, how am I going to get a new shirt? So my, my uncle, bless his heart, he got his Bob Marley t-shirt just for me! And he gave it to me, and I wore it, and now it's one of my favorite t-shirts ever! Anyways, that's basically the story about that. <laughs> um, what do you think about Bob Marley? I love Bob Marley, and that's awesome. I am, I'm, I'm fucking. I, hey, <laughs> what's Fuck your favorite? It, I guess. Uh, what's your favorite Bob Marley song? Um, "Free Bird" by Leonard Skinner. Mm. My favorite pick. Bob Marley song is. Uh, don't worry, be happy. That's a good one. That's yeah, that's my favorite by him. Yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic Bob Marley song right there. Yes. What? What's this fucking attitude you have right now? Please I'm sorry. don't swear. Oh, this is I just slipped out. This I'm isn't sorry. an attitude. This is just. Oh, excuse uh, me, but just, I'm know. so sorry that our favorite Bob Marley song is the most well-known one. I'm sorry we look like posers. Okay, maybe no, we just I'm, like I'm, that I'm, song. I'm just maybe we just like that song. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just like that song. I, I don't know. Think Maybe we choice. just like I just, it. I don't know. You know. It's like I like that song. Okay. My second heard, favorite song you. by him is my second favorite song by him is Over the Rainbow. Um, that was just fantastic. <laughs> Knocks him out of the park. My personal favorite, I think, is uh like my favorite Bob Marley oh, song is actually um uh, uh probably um Nervous Young and Humans. Oh yeah? Yeah, that's pretty my good. My favorite Bob one Marley is probably song. uh I don't know. I don't know. Nothing already <laughs> came to mind. Next question. <laughs> All right, the next question. So, what is your biggest fan written about? Um, it's written by our about our man, our label manager, Carter C. And then you can like put up a picture of Carter's face on the radio. Yeah, um, put it on the radio. They uh, go by they them pronouns. Just a reminder. Yeah, they them. Um, they um. They basically, when we first met them, we kind of, like, pissed each other off, and, like, we hated them for a bit, and I made a song, because I was very frustrated with them, and Carter likes the song originally, but now they hate it, but they, they, they liked it for a little bit, so, that's the, They that's even the, sung it on stage with us, and- Yeah, they, they sung it on stage with us. They puked, they puked. Oh yeah, if you've seen the live video, they they gag because they were screaming too much and, and then they ran outside and puked. <laughs> and they ran outside and puked. Wow, that's yeah. uh, that's real performers art right there. If you're on stage about they the throw they up also song. they also took a mic and slammed it against my face and I thought I lost a tooth and I was bleeding, so I grabbed the microphone and I hit it across my face and I screamed into it and then I laughed like a like a like an evil like a Joker from, like, like Joker yeah like Joker. <laughs> Like Joker. Like Joker. I feel oh. like Willie could do like a good Joker impression. I'm gonna be totally honest. I don't I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for swearing. I don't I I'm sorry. <laughs> no okay. worries. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's just <laughs> next question. Alright. On to you know, like the creation, like production sort of side of things. How does your process from the initial idea to a finalized, presentable creation that you publish out in the world usually come about? Um, okay. So we used to do it. We would both hop in a call and we would play video games and then we would be like, hey, do you want to make like a song? And then we would finish it in like an hour. But now we... Uh, we've totally changed up that process and 
now we make songs like I, I just make songs on my own and he makes songs on his own. And we, um, uh, we, we like, yeah, we, that's how we do it. And then, and then like we record our parts over it. I, I usually, but if I was going to do like a, a step-by-step basis on how we make a song now, it goes, um, I either find a song I really like or I find, or I've like, I think up a melody in my head while I'm like walking about. And uh, for like the song, I usually try to like make something similar to it, not like exactly like it. Uh, but anyway, uh, if I think of a melody in my head, I run home and I grab my guitar and I try to copy it down. And then, yeah. And, and then it's like, I get like a, a demo done and then I send it to Willie and he was like, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I fuck, uh, yeah, I F with it. Uh, or no, I don't like it. No, I don't mess with it. Yeah. Uh, but Willie also sends me demos over the phone and stuff. Um, he, he, um, he also, I, wait, how do you write lyrics? You write lyrics because you're like, oh, let me, let me go to my schizoid book. He has a schizoid <laughs> Don't book. say that. I, I have a bunch of, um, I, I, whenever I walk around and I come up with ideas, I write them down in, uh, like like a notepad or like a little book and I pick from those ideas and I also like to like experiment with how I sing and what kind of uh like how to how to write lyrics because a lot of people like I know that Kurt Cobain had this really cool like um writing strategy where he'd for it's not for all of his songs but for some of them he uh would pick out just like ab- like words from like a poem he'd write and he'd pick out like the best sentences and he'd arrange them in a way f- so he could sing them properly and i've been trying to like do better stuff cuz i feel like i don't pull my weight around in the band enough and i try to like make up for it by being trying to be better at what i do so i can like i don't know hold some candle to star's genius that's real. I am Kanye. I'm the Kanye of the band. He really is, yeah. I'm I'm literally the Kanye of the band, which is he's the, and he's did you know Kanye, Kanye is a solo artist? <laughs> I am everything. This this I am the glue that holds the earth together. You should no, kick but, me out. No, but for for real, Willie has this weird um like he, he has this weird thing where he thinks like he's stupid and that I could go on without him. Uh, which is very strange because you usually don't see that with people who are like l- the lead person in a band, like the face. Um, yeah, it's very strange because he does all the art, he does all the vocals, he does production, he does all the work that I don't do. Or like, I don't even fucking upload the music on the distro kid. I barely promote that shit. Like, oh, sorry for swearing. Um, yeah. This next question, what got you into making music? Uh, Star can it, Star has a really cool origin story. Um, so when I was little, I would listen to Michael Jackson and I, I always heard all the elements. I heard every layer. I remember, I remember knowing like, oh, that's, that's, that What's that layer. What's that instrument? And then, um, so from there I would like rap in my backyard and i thought i was really good <laughs> is that real just, there's yeah, no was, way that's that's fucking was, awesome dude i was a kid i would just go to my backyard and walk around because i listened to a lot of public enemy and queen and stuff and my dad was really like the biggest person who got me into like music and t- like he drove me to all my bass lessons but anyway like uh when i was like 12 i started playing my pencil like a guitar because i thought it was cool and kids were like, oh, why do you do that? You're weird. Stop. Aww. And and I, I just decided to buy a bass guitar. So I, I asked my mom and we bought a bass guitar <laughs> like out of the blue because the economy was that good. We could just do that. Bought a bass guitar and a big amp. I didn't know how to play it. Got no lessons for it until I started getting lessons for it at 13. And from there, I developed everything. The first bass line I learned was uh the saw theme which is oh what for real and but like the, the first bass line i like i could like that for a real song 
yeah. was like uh, Stevie Wonder's uh, Sign Sealed Delivered. Oh, that's cool. And uh, and then okay, and then next, like from there, from like learning the bass, I uh, I think I eventually got to high school and I was really scared because I didn't know how to read sheet music and I didn't want to learn, but I still got into the jazz club, the jazz band. Mm-hmm. And from there, I got to try different instruments like the drums, the guitar. And at 14, I made my first EP. And uh, it sounds like awful. It's like the garbage, but it's like post rock. It's weird to look back on. I kind of like it. It seems very like, I don't know. It's it's kind of Puma Bluish or whatever. Just yeah, like I, I guess music. so. I like yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's this one song that's really pretty on there called um, Love Song for. It's like the title track of the album, right? Love Song for a Bulldog. Oh no, that's not that's at sixteen. I'm I'm still at fourteen. This is my musical oh, journey. Sorry. Oh shit! Oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, after that, I made my first album at fifteen, and it's all instrumental because I was like a jazz head. And then I started a band in high school, and it, they were awful. It was awful. It's just like the worst. Oh yeah, singer. I remember that. Yeah, you showed me that. Yeah, yeah. That was goofy. you can all find this on my Bandcamp if you really want to check it out. But go come kill uh, us. Find where we live. Yeah, find where we live. Uh, and then I started making solo music because this guy flunked out on me and would never come to <laughs> band practice or anything. And um, yeah, that's basically. And then Willie found my solo stuff after I showed him, and then we started this. And this is it, basically. Do you want to you hear my musical journey now? It's yes. pretty intense. So when I was really little, um, I'd constantly listen to, like, the radio here in my state. And they'd always play these, like, weird, like, indie music songs. I don't know. It was just popular, like, indie music around that time. You know, like, Milky Chance or, like, fucking, like, uh... What's that? What's Swear. that one? What? Yeah, no, no, no. We, I, was, I sent you the song. It's like... Last night I saw oh, the you. The strokes. No, never mind, yeah, the strokes. Yeah, the strokes. And um, I never knew what the genre of the music was called, but I really fucking liked it. And, oh my god! Uh, and, I'm swearing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am sorry i i really like that music. I don't. I don't know why, but it really appealed to me. Like at a very young age. And um, I I started watching like movies too that my mom had. that were like indie movies, like uh, Where the Wild Things Are, and they had these all this really nice folk music in that song. I mean, in that movie composed by uh, Karen O. And uh, I think this band that she hired, it's called they say it's called like Karen O and the Kids or whatever. That's like what the full thing's called. But um, I listened to that stuff and I thought it was really cool. And I never knew like what that kind of music was called or anything. And one day I I used to go to this day home when I was really little. And I went downstairs and there's this kid named Kenny there. And he was downloading music to his iPod. And he turns to me and he goes, listen, listen, Willie. Okay. Music is the most universal thing in the world. It can transcend language. It transcends culture. It transcends everything. It's beautiful. It's literally one of the most like universal things in the world. And I was like, wow, this kid's awesome. And you want to know what he was downloading onto his iPod? What? He's downloading Boom 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 by the Black Eyed Peas on there. And he was, <laughs> he's talking about that song. <laughs> and he had it blasting in the background. It was going boom, boom, boom. Gotta get that boom, boom, boom. It was awesome, dude. But yeah, that that's hilarious. That's and that, so I always had like a like a very a big interest in music, but I, I never knew how to play an instrument. And I asked my mom for a bass guitar when I was really little, and she said, no, you're not getting a bass guitar, just learn how to play normal guitar. And I didn't know how to play normal guitar. And then I was in choir for a little bit, and I, I, I think all the kids made fun of me in choir because I think I was I always sang, like, incredibly off-key, and they'd always bully me. They were like, hey, can you you go up and sing the, the solo part in front of everybody? And I went, oh, I, I don't know, guys. So I'd get really self-conscious about it. And then I met um, Star, and I really liked his music, and it was exactly like the stuff that I was listening to at the time, and the stuff that I really wanted to make with him, and I thought that he can, he will, in like 20 years or something, be super fucking big, and I was like, I want to work with this guy, because I think we can make something like very beautiful together, and that's why I wanted to start a little band with him. Isn't that a cute little story? That's pretty interesting, honestly. I always uh, love listening to people's origin stories and like how they discovered music and how it, you know, sort of 
changed their life in this sort of way. Yeah. Uh, second last question. Why did you guys choose the name Willie Rodriguez for uh, this project? Um, all right, I'll explain it. Uh, my, it was, it's the name of my old Roblox account. It's not a joke. It was the, I had a Roblox account mm. I play on and it got banned. I don't remember what happened, but my Roblox account got banned. I think it's cause like, I tried to ask for like free Robux in a server or something and some kid reported me and he was like, this kid's trying to scam me. But it was my old Roblox account and, um... I uh I don't know I just that name stuck with me all my life and it's also kind of a play on because like me and Ali are both mixed um my dad's from Ecuador his dad's from no your mom's from Peru right yeah 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 and it's kind of a play on how like like white my name sounds and just like how um kind of like Latino my uh my last name sounds because it's kind of just like I don't know you know and so I was like oh that'd be That'd be a good name for the band, I fucking guess. I don't know. We were probably, like, drunk or something when we made that name our thing. I don't know. Was taken. Mm. You were drunk when I was that drunk thing. off my <laughs> ass. Sorry, can I, I can't say that word. Censor you can that. say ass. You can oh, say I ass. I can say ass? Okay, yeah. I was drunk off my bum, and uh, I couldn't stand up straight, and and Star was freaking the fuck, uh, freaking the F out, going... Oh, what do we name the band? What do we name the band? I went, I know what to name the band. And I said, it's going to be Willie Rodriguez. We're going to make so much money. Willie Rodriguez had, uh, was taken. Was taken. The we're going to make, we're gonna make so dream, much though. money. And then, and then here we go. We got 20 bucks in our bank account. We did it. Let's go. We got, we got Look it. at me, mom. I'm on CBC radio. <laughs> I want college radio. Let's go. I want college radio. So, is there uh, any projects currently in the works to be released in the future? Nope. Um, yes, but <laughs> no, there is. There is. There is. It's just they're going slow because I don't know. I really wanted to get this radio interview done. I know it sounds stupid, but I wanted to get it out of the way because it was like boggling my mind. And now I can work on music again. Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, I um we're working on a remaster for uh, terminal lucidities and uh right now I'm making uh a compilation that I'm uh yeah that I'm working on. Yeah. And uh I don't know. We're trying to take our time on this one because it's kind mm. of like it's in very the word, special. In the words of Star Stare, it's it's his like passion project, right? Yeah. And I agree. I think it should be very special cuz it'd just be I don't know. It'd just be a lot better if we took our time on it and actually, like, tried to, I guess, improve on elements that we haven't improved or, like, we could improve on and the music we've done before. And I just think it'd be, I don't know, it'd just be, it'd just be interesting to see what we could do with more time. Also, uh, people have rated it, like, our biggest, our most highly rated album, I think, like, so far. Like, people enjoy the concept that we did. Yeah. No, Which I'm happy it. about, because I, I was super depressed, and I put all that work in for that. No. <laughs> no, the, the, whole song, the whole album was like, we hated each other. Yeah. It's like yeah. rumors, but like yeah. awful. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, rumors by Fleetwood Mac? Did they hate each other while they made that yeah, song? Yeah, they wrote it, songs about is each that other. Why they, is that why they broke up, and then they got back together and made the greatest hits of Fleetwood Mac? Yes, that's what that's what they did. That's beautiful. That's what they did. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess that's it. If there's uh, any social media you guys would like to plug, go right ahead. I would like to plug my side project, Drug Bug, named after the Willie Rodriguez song "Drug Bug." I like to plug my mom's Twitter at Don. Uh, <laughs> wait, what's my Twitter handle? I forgot. Let me see. I like to plug my dad's Discord account. <laughs> I like to plug <laughs> my 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 mom's Instagram. I'm oh, sorry, uh, my mom's Twitter at Willie underscore Rod Riguez with a zero for the Rod. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on the air and doing this interview with me and. To everyone out there that's listening, I highly suggest you check out this album. It's called Silly Love Songs for Unfortunate Breakups by Willie Rodriguez. You can find it on 
streaming services. You can find it on Bandcamp. You can buy it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really good album. Uh, we'll be right back after the short break with some other music. So yeah, I guess I'll see you then. <laughs> 